Hello, and welcome to episode 22 of the Lieberland Show. I'm your host, Adam J. Carswell. Today we are joined by Rob Altman. Rob is the Lieberland representative to the Caribbean, and he also intends to be the Olympic chairman for Lieberland as well when the time is ready. Rob, thank you for joining us, and do you have any opening remarks for our listeners? It's a pleasure to join you on this conversation and introducing myself as a part of the Liberland team. Uh, I know the Liberland team is probably bigger than uh, that I met, but uh, the people I've met so far working with Liberland uh, are amazing people and everybody, everybody feel like it's a whole one big family. Yeah, absolutely. And talking to you before this call, getting to know each other a little bit, I was really impressed with your background and some of the things that you're working on and that you've planned on. And so that makes me as a Liberlandian also feel much more patriotic. So speaking of that, you know, we mentioned it in your intro, we were talking about the Olympics. So tell me, tell me kind of your vision for as the, as the potential Olympic chairman for Liberland. As we all know, Liberland is a concept which will be uniting people across the world you know, as we are incorporating blockchain technologies and all the other electric, el- electronic things is the way to shine for a small nation like Liberland is to promote unity, success behind boundaries of continent. The Olympic spirit is one of the most beautiful things that has been in, introduced into the world where you see country who compete against each other every uh, I would say every two years because we if we when we put the right. competition between the the winter Olympics and the summer Olympics it's every two years we have an event which all you have to do is just bring your talent of athletic talents and you can compete and succeed. You have the stories of the amateurs uh, athlete. I'm talking about amateurs, people who are not getting paid right. as a full-time jobs and uh, getting endorsement in the millions of dollars that this goes to a professional athlete. You get the moms who are running their own family household mm-hmm. who hold the two, jo- two times jobs. You have the people who are running away from uh, prosecutions. Those are the peoples we all can relate it to. Those are the peoples that live in sometimes worse life than your us, where they are getting a sponsors or they don't get a sponsors like the, the slate, the, the ice slate uh, from Jamaicans that they, they, they don't even have snow in Jamaica, but they have a bobsled. Right. Run, uh, uh, running a team so they don't win but they go in the Olympic is not as much as as, as success it's the participations right and people's coming in and you, you can make their dreams and the life behind them and you know what and they go ahead and they win that medal so they might be sometimes the most precious things that they have in their house and sometimes all their properties, the possessions that they hold is l- worth less than the medal that they, they won. Right. But the issue is when I see Liberland as, as a small nation, you go ahead and you go and you reduce the numbers of champions that can come from each state. Mm-hmm. And you look up, sometimes you don't get all the best in the world. You can have, if you look out at the United States teams, athletics, gymnastics, swimmers, they have an Olympic trial. Now in the Olympic trials, there is a limit numbers of athletes that could come in in every sports. Mm-hmm. And you know, as a, I'm a big gymnastics fan. What the gymnastic team has done they, they kept reducing the participations of the people in gymnastics in the Olympics. I believe in the Tokyo Games, it's going to be reduced to four members. He went from nine years ago to four this, this year. Now, if you look at the tryouts or the figure skating the same way, what happened to the persons who is as much as good as the other ones but finished fifth? Those persons get locked out of the Olympics. Mm-hmm. 
What happened with the Jamaican athlete? We all know Jamaican athlete. I want to open a door for them to still come into the Olympics. So if they don't come to represent their own homeland country, I want to create some kind of another opportunity for them that they will come into us and join us and go ahead and represent Liberland. So they can go ahead, they can train in the countries, they can work in the countries, and then they go ahead. Because you know what? The same guy that's finished fifth in the gymnastic could come in, I don't know if we have, we'll, we, can, we can set it up for Tokyo, but the one after Tokyo could come in and represent Liberland and could, could have a hot streak in right. that specific, it's because it's all about the streaks. You know, if he had a bad day in the tryouts and then he, then he trained and he comes up and he can come in and win the gold medal. Mm-hmm. And then the other kind of say, you know what? You see, he's, he, he's as good as the guys who finish in, in the next place is as good as the other one that just had a bad competitions. It always happens. You know, how many times do we see athletes who have that? So I want to open and give them the chance to go ahead and under another flag of a country who promote love and freedoms and, and participate. And I do not discriminate. Whoever is that, you know, I will have the talented people to come again and represent us. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a very unique idea. I, I didn't even realize that was maybe the direction that you were going with your thought, but that's, that's so cool. And I think that makes a ton of sense. And that would be amazing to see that idea become something physical that we can watch unfold one day. And I, I actually, part of me wants to keep talking about the Olympics now, but we have some other topics that, that I want to cover before our, uh, before our interview is over. And so now the other one is you are a Liberland representative to the Caribbean. And so tell us how that relationship and how that mission began and how you got tied into the Caribbean. It's interesting, you know, I actually read, since I'm originally from Israel, but that's a, that's a different story for now, <laughs> I read up an article online on, in the Hebrew newspapers about that individual who is trying to create his own country in a no man's land in Europe. Something you know, you see something like that, you say, Oh, well, what is that? Oh, God, <laughs> right. read it. I read, so I find out, and then, of course, you have to go ahead and you have to translate the Hebrew language because they, they give you the name of Vitya Lichka in Hebrew, <laughs> and you have to go ahead and find it. So, eventually, I found it, and then I today, everybody goes to Facebook for information, right? I find Facebook fascinating because you can network and i sort of reached out to uh, to vit and uh, in those days vit was very friendly and i spoke to him over facebook what happened is my father ran an event in florida in 2016 reaching about you know speaking about spanish uh, moranos you know the jewish people who got uh, prosecuted by the spanish inquisitions and he spoke about that and i reached out to Vit and I told him, you know what, we're having a nice event in Florida. Do you have anybody that, you know, are you, go, can, are you in town or can you send somebody, you know? Might mm-hmm. be something to be, to promote your agenda to. So he sent us Tom Wells, who then was the U.S. representative and eventually he became the foreign minister, is uh-huh. still holding this position. And, and then, you know what? After that event, it was in September 2016. I said, you know what? You know, I like those guys. Let, let me join, uh, see if I can join the team. So uh, I reached out and, you know, Liberland is always uh, uh, welcoming new members to the team. It's very diverse, very easy, you know, to uh, reaching out. And uh, so I started. And then, you know, you got to look at it. What's the talent that you were you able to give them, you know, they, they will try to do whatever the best is for you to, to promote. So mm-hmm. I, I am, li- I'm been li- I'm been living in, in New Jersey for many years, about 20 years. And I sort of, you know, um, for my different other uh, involvement, got in contact with some of the Dominican peoples and there's Haitian peoples and mm-hmm. Jamaican peoples, you know, so uh, they, they told me, okay, why don't you be, uh, become our uh, 
First, they told me that yeah, I should be the representative of the Dominicans. And then they, they said, well, as well, reach out for the old regional area. So I, I'm, I'm there. So I'm, I'm not going to be the ambassador since I like to stay where, I'm, where I am. I don't like to, I don't want to move away from. So I said, be, a, be the representative. So what happened is, you know, I'm being, I've been using my connections that I developed before in order to, uh, to promote uh, liberal and uh, recognition and awareness around the Caribbeans as well. And that's another thing that I've observed on your behalf already is the relationships that you have now in the Caribbean, New Jersey, you're from Israel, you're a rabbi. I, correct me if I'm wrong, I think I even saw you might have some connections with the United Nations. Where, where does all of that begin? It's, it's a, very, a very impressive resume. Uh, rabbis, you know, I've been, a, I've been born a rabbi for many years, you know, like, it's like, I don't know if, if it was the best career choice, but I mean, <laughs> it's, I, I've been teaching, uh, I, when I grew up, I thought I'm going to be a teacher, so, you know, but you know, and I like teaching, but uh, you know, it's not an easy job to do. And I did end up, you know, uh, using that as a provider of, of my financials. You do build up. A reputation because everybody look at you as a rabbi and say that you know a man of God. I always been involved with communal. My father has been the head of different high level institutions in Israel for many years, and he's a world renowned uh, place. And I think I might have, in my way, my father's son. You know, we did we did choose a different path, but there is some of it. I guess came from him. And yeah, then, can, uh, can we give uh, a quick recognition to your father? Uh, what was his name and, and what exactly did he do? My father, his name is Dr. David Altman. He uh, has been the head of the bar University for many years. And then he joined the Tel Aviv Foundations. And uh, his last job, he was the vice president of the Natania Academic College and the head of the strategic dialogues in Natania University. That's, uh, that's a, a something that he he's, has created a few years ago, Global Strategic Dialogue in Natania Academ Academic University. My father has met uh, Vit a couple of times, and actually he hosted Vit, Vit for one of his roundtable discussions a few years back. Wow. And he's also involved with the Christian Union. He's a very good friend of the Christian United for Israel, Pastor John Hagee from San Antonio. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's inspiring. I can see now where, where you're saying the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree. Yeah. What is the most unique experience that you've had since becoming a Leverlandian? Unique experience. I mean, you know, the journey has just started mm -hmm. and, and the story is yet to be written. But as far as we had, I am impressed with the humility of the president. I mean, as a head of states, he's probably the most humble person. Everybody know what Vit Yadlitschka have to offer. Mm -hmm. But he's just a regular guy. He's a friendly guy. He's a re he comes in, he doesn't walk around with, you know, fancy stuff. He's, he's like the guy, you know, you want to go out with to have a beer, not just to sit for a meeting. Right. And we had some, you know, we had some good experience. A couple of years ago, he came with us to the Christian United for Israel event in uh, Washington, D.C., which was uh, actually sponsored by uh, Kufai. And he was, uh, had a great time there. We, we spent together the night in honor of Israel, where the honors Vice President Pence Mm -hmm. And uh, a couple of, uh, he actually came into two hours, actually to my town. And I actually set them up in a place, which is downstairs used to be a synagogue. And upstairs was rooms. And we had a, a nice uh, weekend over there. We, were, we went to the Dominican parade. And uh, we acknowledged by the host of the Dominican parade as guest of honor. Uh -huh. That was a nice event. And then we, and then that that night we had a TV interview, which was recorded by a, a Caribbean stations. But uh, that TV, they never really launched that channel, so that video is stored. And then the following day, we were back in that station, and we were interviewed as well for the radios. I have a radio show 
So we were, we were interviewed. So those are the experiences, you know, the so far experiences. But again, as I say, the story is just getting started. And I'm sure throughout the years, and I intend to serve Liberland for many years, you know, in some kind of a capacity. So I think, uh, I think there will be much more unique stories and events down the road for us. I agree. And I look forward to those as well. Uh, one thing I want to highlight that you had mentioned to me before our call, you recently received some form of recognition on, uh, for Liberland on behalf of the state of New Jersey. What, what exactly was that? Can you describe what took place? Yeah, I, I am also, you know, I'm, I'm very involved with public figures in, in West Orange. I know the former mayor of West Orange, mm-hmm. John McKeon, who is also an assemblyman of, the, of, of District 27. When he was a mayor, I established good relationship with him. Uh, but uh, at the end of the day, as you know, as a New Jersey and home, homeowner, I am not impressed with the taxation that the Texas in the, right. in the state to the property taxes are sky, sky high in here. But I was able to establish a good relationship with him. As I don't know if people have been aware about what we're trying to do in the United States. We're trying to pass different state resolutions in order of acknowledgement of Liberland because we all, you know, the more uh, acknowledgements, the more legalities that we have, it's better for us, you know, eventually, you know. I might believe it's just a question of time until the State Department will say we recognize the uh, Liberland as, uh, as a sovereign state. But for now, there's few states that are processing, passing the resolutions. So uh, Bogi Wozniak, the vice president, uh, mm-hmm. asked me if I can try to do it in New Jersey. So I reached out in New Jersey to Assemblyman McKeon, and I've spoken to him. So before I spoke to him, he didn't even hear about Liberland, which is you know, very common, you know, uh, to, to be noticed. That's why we're working diligently hard to, to get right. the names out as well. So he go ahead and he searched, and then he told me that he reached out to the assembly, assembly is the is the lower house of the of the state of New Jersey. We have the Senate and the assembly, which I would say is like the U.S. Congress of New Jersey. And then uh, he he said to me that the speaker said, "You know what? I cannot pass a resolution in support of Israel because sorry, Israel, I have Israel on my mind, but in, in support of 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 Liberland because Liberland is promoting libertarians." value we are democrats and we don't believe in libertarians value which you know what in a sense you know what i can see what where they come from but the other positive i took out of it is uh, that they didn't speak about you know geopolitics the croatians or the only problems that they had is because we don't stand up for the principle. So, so that means, you know what, they, they think we have a right to exist, but you just don't promote it because it's not democratic mm-hmm. views, you know, of values. Okay, so if I can, he can give me a personal recognition. Do I want it? I say, of course, why not? You know, it, 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 see, it goes for me and it goes for them. So they went ahead and they researched all the information and I took me a few, a couple of months to get it. And they sent me nice letters about that's not the first time we're getting something in that official from New Jersey, because when we went to the Dominican parade on July, we got a recognition letters from the state senator Teresa Ruiz, that was going on to uh, to actually we were four. It was Vit and Boggy and Dave uh, Malanus, that is the mm-hmm. U.S. representative. So we got letters from them as well. It was the state and it was the state senator Teresa Ruiz, and that was a uh, city of Newark. And Vit and Boggy, I believe, also got from the governor of New Jersey. So once you put it all together, so we do have some kind of a, of a recognition. Might be it's not the state official, but you know what? They're acknowledging us 
as our position and our labor land capacity. Right. And that's all we need to, to keep moving forward and keep making progress. So thank you. Thank you so much for your service to Liberland. Rob, we're at the end now, but I do want to give you a chance to let the listeners know how they can get in touch with you or, or what's the best way they can follow up after listening to our interview. You can find me on Facebook, ravaltman.com. I think the limit of, for, for friends is 5,000. I'm, I'm not up to that yet. So, I mean, if, <laughs> if, you, if, you, if you like, if you want to get to me in person and the uh, also, you can like the Olympic, the Liberland Olympic page okay. and, and contact me through there. You know, I mean, I, I'm the one administrating the Liberland Olympic page. You can, uh, you can reach me out there. And there, there, uh, there is an email address over there, the Olympic Games at Liberland.org. It also goes to me. Perfect. Good to know. And we will include that information in the show notes. Guys, this has been episode 22 of the Lieberland Show. I'm your host, Adam J. Carswell, and today we were joined by Rob Altman, the Lieberland representative to the Caribbean, as well as many other great things he's doing, as you can see. Rob, thank you for joining us. Do you have any closing messages or remarks for the listeners? Closing remarks will be is the Lieberland project is a unique project, and the, eventually I can see great things in other country and worlds adapting some of the ideas and the principle of Liberland. If you are concerned about, you know, how far has we gone, we have gone far. We, all, we haven't settled up the, and, and built up the land itself, but I believe that it's only a question of time. And I think with probably pre, pretty soon, we're going to see some more and more advances in the, in, in the ventures. And you know what? They say that good things takes a long time. And that's a long time, but there's no doubt in my mind that this project will flourish and come out strong very soon. Absolutely. Thank you so much for your time, Rob. I look forward to uh, our next conversation, whenever that will be. And yes, live and let live. As you said, good things take time. We're just going to keep progressing one day at a time. Thank you so much. Have a great day. All right, guys, we will catch you in the next episode.